Looking for a budget-friendly way to add some accent lighting to a room, or perhaps some under the cabinet lighting that's difficult to get to. Or maybe you're just looking to enhance your video backdrop. Look no further than the Govee H617A RGBIC LED light strip. I'm Wander001. Let's get into it. For starters, Gobi does keep things very simple. Here is your box. Here's what you get in the box. Everything that you need is right here. A little film reel to keep your LED light strip in one place and a control box and power pack. That is it. You do not get any extras with this particular light strip. To start off, this particular model comes in several different sizes. This is the 16 and a half foot variant. You have RGB IC, and that IC means that they are independent controlled LED lights, which allow it to display multiple colors on a single line at a time, which I'll show you a little later. But that means right now I have it showing just red, but you can have multiple colors along this entire six and a half foot string and broken up into individual segments. Gobi also says that the RGB IC is actually brighter than you would get with your standard LED lights. And I happen to have a light meter right here. So let's take a look at how bright we can make this. So right here is just the ambient light that I'm getting from my light over there. Once we turn on the Gobi, put this down by one of its LED nodes. There you can see, pretty bright, not bad. And here will be test number two at full brightness because that last test was only 30% brightness. So here we go, max white coming down to that same node right here. You can see instead of being 400, now we're into the thousand. So that lets you know just how bright this actually is. Actually, if I come right here, I will do one more time really close. And I'm holding the brightest that I was able to get as I brought it closer. Besides having diff different colors for the entire strip, you can also have segments of different brightness, which again is something you don't really see in a lot of other LED strips, at least the ones that I've tested so far. With this Gobi strip, you can have access to 16 million different colors and 64 preset scenes. So if you can't come up with a color combination or blinking to your liking, you can use one of the pre-made ones from Govi or people in the Govi community. But the thing with any smart device is it's set up. If it's hard to set up, you're not gonna use this. So let me show you how easy it is to set up this Govi Bluetooth light strip. This will be a setup of Govi RGBIC LED light strip. First and foremost, you're gonna make sure that you have the Govi app installed on your smartphone. You don't need an account in order to add devices to it, which I greatly appreciate. Next, you're gonna make sure that you power on your device. You're gonna plug everything in. Do be mindful of the warning on the back, which pretty much states, do not use these LEDs while they're still on the light spindle here. But we are just going to set these up very quickly and then move them to the location that I want. So I am powering on. You'll see that they are flashing colors, letting you know, hey, we are ready to go. So we're gonna come over to the Govi app and we are going to select add a device. From here, we can see lots of different LED light strips to choose from. So it is very important that you look at the back of the box and notice that these are the H617A. So then we can look and find it on our list here. Since they have so many of these, I would recommend doing the search. Once you find it, select, and you're going to allow Govi to determine your position. You're going to say allow, and it's gonna ask for precise. If you're using Android, I'm gonna say, well, using the app, and then it's trying to locate these. And here you can see right up here, that's what we're looking for. And it's going to connect. Device is pairing the short press, the on off button, which is right here. And it found it. So we are just going to rename this just so I know what this is and select done. All right, so it connected. We're gonna say upgrade now. Always a good idea to upgrade your firmware, especially when you get something out of the box. It says it can take upwards of two minutes. I will not subject you to that, even though it looks like it'll be shorter and we will come back when it's done. Took no time at all. And as you can see, it's actually on the mode that listens to me talking, but that has been set up of the Govi RGBIC LED light strip. Now that you saw how easy it is to set up the Govi strip, let's start talking about some individual components. Yes, we have the LED light strip itself, but none of that works without this. This is the control box for the Govi. You have Three buttons, one at the top. The one at the top is your power. This will turn on and off your Govi light strip. The one in the middle will cycle through colors. You can kind of see them off to the left there 
as I'm cycling through. And then down here at the bottom, you have sound mode. So if I do that, you can see now it is activating based on sound because there is a microphone right there. But the other thing that this button can do, if I come back to my solid color, if I press and hold this, this will allow you to cycle through six different brightness levels for the LED strip without having to access the application. One nice aspect of the control box to the LED strip that were issues for me on other manufactured LEDs is the length of cable from the control box to the LED strip. So you get seven inches there, but from the control box to the actual power, that is six foot. This makes placement of the control box away from your power source and away from where you have the LEDs very useful because here you've got some 3M tape so you could stick this somewhere, but not have to be too close to a power source or too close to where you want the LEDs hung up. I greatly appreciate that extra length of cabling. Coming down the line to our actual LED strip here, you can see on the back, you've got 3M sticky, so you can affix this to wherever you like. It is extraordinarily flexible. And while you might see these connection points here, the RGB IC LED strips cannot be cut or extended because you will lose functionality with the LED strip. So the size you get is the size that you get. The LED strip itself has 15 sections and six LED nodes per section. You can control the brightness of each zone, as I mentioned before. One of the interesting things that I came across with the Govi here is that there is actually no epoxy or rubber coating on the top of the LED strip. Like I am literally touching the LED nodes and other hardware along the LED strip. So that kind of comes into play a little later. And the fact that there is no coating on this can manifest an interesting thing in that if you happen to touch or run your hand across or some other animal in your house touches the strip in specific places, the LEDs can actually come on uh, because you are completing a circuit. This is the first LED strip that I've tested that has not had an epoxy coating on it. So I, I'm assuming that was to keep the price of this particular LED strip down, but just know you might run into problems should it come in contact with something that can complete the circuit. The LEDs when left on, even at their highest capacity, are not terrible to touch in any way, shape or form. They're warm, but not hot to the touch. Each LED node, which might be difficult to see, I will try and insert a picture if I can, but the RGB, as you might imagine, means that each LED node has a red, green, and blue, which is how it mixes its colors and then bounces it around the node and produces a color for you. It's very bright, which is why my camera can't focus. That is the LED strip itself. What kind of controls do we have for the Govi LED light strip here? Well, that's all done through the application. So let's take a look. This is the application for the Govi H617A LGB light strip. And you can kind of see it there in the background for purposes of this video. We're gonna be kind of holding this up in front in order to demonstrate in real time some of these features. Up at the top in the upper right hand corner, normally I save this for later, but this is actually our settings menu. There's not a lot in here. There's a help request. There's a rename your device, hardware version, and product. Down here, we, we can delete the device, but that's really all that we can do from that page. At the top right here, we have a power on and power off. You'll notice that dynamically, the image on the screen also changes as things are lighting up in the background. You will also notice that you do have to be connected to this via Bluetooth. And then right there, it will tell you the firmware version that you're currently on. As we move down, in the applications menu, we have our effects lab. If I select this option, what this will do is give you some color palettes. So let's say you're not really sure how you should be coloring your LED. Well, there's a bunch of options here. Notice this is just basic colors. All that scrolling was basic colors. We can go to neutral or star and it will start pulling up color palettes based on images and things of that nature. It's great if you have no idea how to color your LED light strip. You also have your effects lab. This is located in a couple of different areas. So we're gonna go into this a little more in depth later, but you have neutral, festival, life, emotion. And as I change these or select one of these, the LED light strip back there will dynamically start changing with the effects that we pick. Selecting back, we have our timers. By default, we've got a bunch of options right here. All of them are in the off position, but if I select one, 
I can say timing on or off, what time, and then repeats what days. And you could do that for several different types. You also have a wake up option right here. So if I select that, wake up time, select your time, repeats, wake up duration, and then final brightness level, meaning you can gradually have your LED light strips turn themselves on and brighten up to wake you up in the morning if that's what you wanted. And then likewise with sleeping, do you want to lower for getting ready for going to bed? Next, we have our LED brightness. Right now I have that at 100% so that you can see them while I have the phone in front. But if I lower that, you can see 1% right there. They are still very visible. Normally I keep them about here at 30%. That for me seems to be the sweet spot. But again, for purposes of this, so you can see in the background, 100%. Right now we are on the color mode. And what that will do is anytime you select something, that's gonna change the options that you have access to down here. So I'm gonna start this off on the music mode and warn you that it's gonna be a lot of blinking. So for music mode, you have the ability to either that image right there is the LED light strip, or you can sync it to your phone. And in this case, I'm gonna tell it and it's gonna use my microphone. Now you have the ability to adjust your sensitivity and then what type do you want? Party, dynamic. So if I select that, it's gonna be dynamic, a little more muted, or then calm. So it's really not gonna jump up at you. So we're gonna leave it at calm just for the purposes of this. We have auto color. I can turn that on or off. So auto color will kind of do it based on the sounds that it's hearing, but I can specify specific colors. So if I want that to be the color, if I want that to be the color, you can do that all from here. And if you want it, you have color wheel. So I can select anything from this color wheel, or we have the my colors area right here, which will allow me to add my specific color palette. And you can see it's giving you some suggestions right there. There's a lot of customization that you get with this app for the LED light strip. Coming back, we're gonna pop up to our colors option now. Right here, you can see you have 15 segments that you can control independently. You can control color, you can control intensity. So right here, I've got a couple that I was messing with before because they all say 29% intensity. So if I increase those brightness, maybe I change those colors, okay. And then I would unselect them and I can select different ones. And for these, maybe I want a different color. So here we have complete rainbowing, we can choose what we want. I want teal. So you can see dynamically, those colors are changing in the background. And you have complete control. You can do everything here. You can select everything if you wanted to, deselect. You can change your style, your scene, your color, all from here. So there's a lot of functionality that you have. And then my colors, just like we had before, if we've got some presets. Now we can go into advanced mode if we wanted to. And this will let you select things such as clockwise versus counterclockwise, cycle, gradient, twinkle, breathe, and then the speed of all of that. Here we have our background colors and then our segments. Again, there are just so many different things that we can do in this application that you can make adjustments to just about anything. I'm not going to save anything, but we're going to come back to our Govi light right here. That was all under color and advanced mode. So we're going to go back to suggested and scene. So scenes are those predetermined things that you can have built yourself or built by other people. Here we have our speed indicator. Realistically, I had it on high as, and that's also what it comes out of the box as. When you select high, you can kind of see that that moves a little too much, especially when filming. So we're gonna drop that down to low. Remember I told you those scenes can be found in other places. Well, they are right here and you can just cycle through all of them. We're gonna, we're gonna do a couple just to give you an idea. Sunrise, and I will lower my lighting a little bit so you can see that. That's sunrise, here's sunset, forest, Aurora, lightning, starry sky, rainbow, deep sea, crast cave, Gobi Desert, flower field, volcano, cornfield, meteor shower, flying, and those, those were just the natural options right there. So for festivals, you've got Christmas. And I do Christmas because each LED company kind of makes their own to see how that looks. You've got Halloween, candlelight, fireworks. Here we have funny. So rhythm, swing, we'll do some emotion. Dreamland, mysterious. For any of our scenes, we can select edit and then adjust what scenes we want because this is ever-changing and ever-evolving. 
people will continuously add more to it. You can also have your own scenes that you can add and adjust. Next, we have our DYI, and then here we could select plus. We have default, we have edit, we have grouping. And if we select in the upper right-hand corner here, the plus sign, well, here we have the name, the icon, the group, and then our color schemas and everything. That's why I said you can make your own fancy scene just using that. And then you have a listing of them there if you chose to make them. There is a lot that you can do in the Govi app, but what I neglected to show you on the front page when you first log into Govi, you've got your on off, lets you know you have Bluetooth connected. This is our homepage. We also have the global community for Govi, which will let you look through so many things that other people are developing and designing and putting out there. You have access to them there. We've got our discovery. So if you're not sure other products from Govi, or lighting situations that you might want. You can do that through the Discover. You have your Govi shop, as you might imagine. They are currently running a lot of holiday sales. And then last is our account page. And you can earn these Govi currencies for things. So if you say you're a savvy user, you get extra points for that. You've got your store, receipts, report an issue, pre-sale consulting, instructions right there. You've got message, firmware, device sharing, widgets, services. There is a lot that you can do for something as simple as a LED Bluetooth light string. If we bring this a little closer, you could see it actually will let you break it down into individual rooms if you wanted to, and you can hit your dots there and add more rooms or management, but I only have the one LED light strip right now, so that's all I need for it to show. That has been a deep dive into the Govi app for the Govi H617A LED light strip. As you saw, there is plenty of customization options in the application, as well as a nice mix of preset colors. While the application does have limited settings for the Govi LED light strip, it makes up for it with the large community of Govi contributors. For me, anything that I put into my home that uses power, I wanna know how much power it is actually using, especially if I'm going to be using it a great deal of time. When it is idling, and roughly idling, we'll say, it uses 1.8 watts of power. When testing, red at 50%, because red is a color that seems to use the least amount of power, it used 4 watts of power. Red at 100% used 4.1. White at 100%, being warm white, used 5.1. A cool white at 100% used 6.7. And depending on the effects that you're using, you can see as high as 11 watts of power. None of that is terrible in any way, shape, or form for something like this. But if you plan to use this all the time or have it placed in a location that is difficult to get to, should something happen? Next question you might not have thought of is, if power is lost, what happens to my LED light strip? In the case of the Govi strip here, if power is lost and then comes back, it will return to the last state it was in. Meaning, if the Govi strip was on, when power is restored, your LEDs will be on, and vice versa. If the strip is off and power is lost, then it will return to an off state. This can be a little troublesome if your power is lost during the day and doesn't return until 3 o'clock in the morning when it's dark out and you have these in your room. You'll, have, <laughs> you'll be woken up by a very bright LED strip, but that is just a data point for you to have. Now, there are a lot of things to like about the Govi light strip here. There are a few cons that I wanted to let you know about. First being the fact that there is no cover for the LED light strip, that epoxy coating, meaning that when I touch specific points that it would turn itself on, that's not good. As this is the only Govi light strip that I've tested, I don't know if it's just on this particular model or all Govi light strips, but other LED light strips that I've tested all had that epoxy coating on the top. And I'm hoping that it's to prevent what I was describing to you from happening. Next. Con, and again, I don't know if it's this particular light strip, meaning not this exact light strip from Govi, but just the one that I happen to get. If I happen to turn the power off, power is off, but you might notice the blue is lighting up. And a little further in there, there's a couple red sections. This started happening to me about two weeks into my testing and usage of the Govi light strip in that the LED nodes were not powering off completely and only in partial sections. And it did start with the red section first and then get to the blue section, which is the closest to the actual controller box right here. Don't know why it does that, but if you're trying to have these completely off, that's going to be a deterrent for you because at least in my testing, uh, they might start arbitrarily turning on LED nodes 
the longer that I use this, uh, the more of these probably will have that problem because I started off with one red section, which then grew to two red sections and then grew to two reds and this blue section. I still have been using the Gobi strip because it is a nice strip, but just know if you're using this in a dark room, you might not want to rely solely on the power. You might need to unplug it to turn everything off. The fact that it cannot be cut or extended might be a deterrent for some, but at this price point, you kind of know what you're getting into. I really wanted to like this light strip but too many off things happen to me when there are other options out there for more established manufacturers it could be that i just got a bad batch as it didn't start off with all those problems except for the epoxy coating and was working pretty well i like the large user community that shares lighting and homebrew color settings that is always a good thing to see around a product you want to see a strong community I do have a few other Govi products that I will be testing later. Govi is one of those products that you see a lot of on YouTube lately, and I wanted to test them out for myself. The Govi light strip here, I have mixed feelings about. Perhaps my next Govi product will be a little better. If the limitations that I've talked about don't deter you, I will leave a link to this light strip so that you can check it out for yourself. The price is right, even if you run into the issues that I did. If you appreciate the time and effort that goes into making a video like this, make sure to hit that like button to help other people find this video as well. Do you know of another budget-minded LED light strip? Let me know in the comments below. If you like what I'm doing here and want to be notified of my next review, hit that subscribe button. Want to know other LED light strip options you have? On screen now, you will see two other options that I have reviewed in the past to help you make an informed decision for yourself.